In this video, we review the data collected by AVD Insights. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to Seraltos. In this video, we're reviewing Azure Virtual Desktop Insight data. Before that, please like, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon for notifications of new content, and share with a friend. That helps grow this channel and is greatly appreciated. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 with Intune Management, and Hybrid Identities with Windows ID and Enter ID on Udemy.com. The links are below. And thank you channel members for your support. Back to it, the goal of this video is to show how to navigate and find information in AVD Insights. We won't go over every setting and message, but by the end, you should have a good understanding of how to review and find data in AVD Insights and get started troubleshooting problems. The data collected by AVD Insights is important to right-sizing the environment if you're just starting out and can help you troubleshoot when users report issues. Let's jump into the portal and get started. To get started, let's go to AVD in the Azure portal and then go to Insights. When we look at Insights underneath Azure Virtual Desktop, it's referred to as AVD Insights at scale. Notice at the top, we can select multiple subscriptions, resource groups, and host pools. This allows us to view information across all host pools. We can also set the time range. For this example, we'll set it to seven days because I'm recording over a few days. Insights at scale gives us information across multiple host pools and workspaces. It doesn't have the same data as AVD Insights has, the Insights panel available when we're looking at a host pool. We don't have session host data, for example, from this view. We can still view that information under the host pool, and we'll do that coming up shortly. We get an overview page. There are four host pools, but only three are available. This lab is kind of a mess right now. We can see available capacity and historical capacity from this view also. If we scroll down, we get the percent of users able to connect and the time to connect a new session. And we'll scroll down some more. And we get utilization data. Again, this is across all host pools and workspaces. Let's scroll up and go to connection diagnostics. We have the option to focus on failures. I'm gonna leave this to no so we can also see successes. From here, we get connection information. Notice the down arrow at the top right of each window. We can use this to download the raw data used to build the chart. Looks like there were some issues with connecting. Let's scroll down a little further. At Connection Activity Browser, we get connection attempts and errors. Let's look at test1.user1. We can drill down. It breaks out the information by the session host the user connected to. We can keep drilling down until we get connection information. If we scroll down a bit, we can see the errors. And if we slide over, it looks like we have an out of memory issue. If this was production, that would be something I would be concerned about. We'll come back to this issue. If we scroll down further, we have the ranking of errors impacting connections. Let's click on one. If we select one of the errors, it will give us more information on that error, including the users impacted and the session host. Let's scroll back up and go to connection performance. From here, we get round trip time by gateway region. My host pool is in central US. Things look good from north central US, but we have some issues with round trip time or RTT over 175 milliseconds from Australia East. Round trip time measures the time it takes for a signal to pass from the client to the host and then back to the client. Think about typing. The user presses a key on the keyboard. That input has to travel all the way back to the session host. The session host processes the keystroke and then passes the screen refresh back to the client. The total time it takes to do this is the round trip time or RTT. This report indicates we have a high RTT from Australia. 
that could be an indication we need to deploy a host pool to a region in Australia. If we scroll down, we get details on the users experiencing the high RTT. This shows the users that are impacted by that high RTT. We can use this information to communicate with the end users to understand what their connection requirements are and if the latency is causing them an issue. Next, we have time to connect. A high time to connect could indicate a busy host or a problem with FS Logic storage, for example. One of my clients waited for over eight minutes to connect. I used a stress test tool called Heavy Load to create these errors so we'd have something interesting to look at. And an eight minute login is definitely interesting. If we scroll down, we can see the host pool and the connection stages and the time it took the service to route the user to a host. Let's go up and go to Users. From here, we can view information specific to a user. Let's search for one of my users, test1.user1. Right at the top, it gives us some information about the user, including the session host they logged into, how long it's been since they logged in, and the client they used. This is information specific to that user. This is a great tool for troubleshooting when a user reports an issue with AVD. We get connection information and information on the client they use, also the time spent on a host. We can scroll down to find errors specific to this user. Here we can see the different clients they used, the connection time to the host, some other useful information, and we can scroll down to see some errors. This is broken down by client, and again, we can drill down to see what these errors are. And again, it's the same out of memory error we saw before. And if we scroll down more, we get the ranking of errors impacting connections for that user. And again, one of the advantages of searching for this information from Insights at Scale or the Insights that's looking at all host pools is we can see data from all host pools this user might have logged into. In this lab, the users are only logging into one host pool, but in the real world, it's possible they're logging into multiple. Let's scroll up to Utilization. Here it's only showing information on one host pool because that's all I've had running in the past few days. If we add others, we could select that to change the scope. And from here we have session history, max users per core, available sessions, and session host count. We can scroll down to get maximum active users, daily connections and reconnections, Top 10 users by completed connections, top 10 hosts by completed connections, and the connection type. We can see what gateway they're coming from and that they're accessing the session desktop or remote desktop session. Let's scroll up and go to clients. Here we see an overview of the clients that were used to log in. Want to know how many Mac users you have in your environment? You can find that here. There's also an alerts tab, but this environment doesn't have alerts set up. We're going to look at AVD insights next. This is the insights available at the host pool level. Let's go to our host pool. Insights. The overview tab and the other tabs have similar information as insights at scale. It's just scoped to a single host pool. The two items that are not available in Insights at Scale is host diagnostics and host performance. This is because the session hosts themselves are available at the host pool level. Let's go to host diagnostics. Here we get some details on the session hosts. Let's change the time range. We'll set that for seven days. And it gives us a message that one or more hosts are reporting issues in the event log. 
that's good information. We had some problems and it's telling us there's an error. We can click on that and get details about that error. Let's scroll down. We get some host pool details and some performance information. If we select that one and go to the session host, we can get details. Let's go to CPU utilization. This shows us that we had some high CPU utilization on that session host at one point. So that's something that may indicate that we've under provisioned this session host, or maybe a user is running an application that's over utilizing the CPU. We can also modify these. So if we wanna see the CPU threshold of 80% instead. The same with three disk space, input delay, available megabytes, page faults, and threshold duration. We'll scroll down and here it shows events. So we can select one of these and pull up the events. We've got some FS logics warnings as well as an unexpected reboot. If we scroll down to host browser, we can select different performance counters. So here we're selecting the memory, page faults per second, and that's going to give us information for that session host on those different performance counters. This is helpful because we don't have to go into KQL at Log Analytics and run queries for this information. We can view it directly from AVD Insights. Here we can see event log information. Go to errors. We can see heavy load here. It's throwing an error and we can get details on that error. So we're able to see from here a lot of information that we would otherwise have to log into the server and start digging through event logs and performance counters for. Let's scroll up and go to host performance. Here we can get details on the session host performance. This gives us a combined view of all session hosts. There's only two, so it's not that bad, but if you had many and you wanted to break it down to just one, we could select it. And here we can see one of the more problematic features of AVD Insights. I clicked on the host name and that took me to the VM page under virtual machines. So I can go back, but it takes me to the overview page and resets my time range. So we'll change it back to seven days and go to host performance. There we are. If we click the white space instead of the actual name, that links us to the VM page. I just want to narrow the scope down to that one VM. And you can see we can do that by clicking on the white space. And that gives us input delay, CPU and memory metrics, and disk timing metrics, as well as host disk queue length. CPU and memory metrics are obvious when it comes to monitoring performance. But the host disk information is also important. If we under provision our disks, say we're using a standard SSD or a standard hard drive, users could have a bad experience if the performance of that disk isn't adequate for the environment. And it would potentially show no issue with CPU or memory, but the underlying disk is the problem. We also have input delay by process, and you can see we can sort by that as well. I have a few processes that are causing a lot of problems. Explore, tree size, but the real problem is this one right here. Heavyload.exe is the application that's using a lot of resources. And because of that, Edge, Tree Size, Explorer, and the Start menu are all delayed. We can scroll over and see the sample count. Input delay by process is a good spot to check for applications that may be using a lot of resources. Let's move on to an example of what we could do if a user called in and said they had a problem with AVD. We'll start by going back to AVD Insights at scale. If 
From here, we can view data about the user from across all host pools. And again, I have to set the time range. We could look at the overview page and see if anything stands out. Something as simple as available capacity being zero, for example. Then go to users. We're going to look up the user. For this example, I'll use another user, test4.user4. That returns information on the connections for that user. We can see what session host they logged into, as well as the clients they've used. Setting the time range to a smaller window when the user was reporting an issue may help narrow down the problem. We could also go to a host pool and view insights for just that host pool. Host performance information, for example. If we scroll down, we can get some information on connection attempts and errors. Also, I want to point out that there is a section for remote apps used. I don't have any remote apps published, but if I did, they would show up here. The information box that the query returned no results isn't really an error. It's just there was no data for it to return. Notice the time to connect was over a minute for one of the connections. And if we scroll down, it shows errors. We can drill down to the specific session host and the connection attempt. And view information on the errors. We'll scroll down to see more errors. These are the errors from the event log. We can adjust the view to see more information. We have some connection failures and heartbeat issues. The errors and what caused them is not really important to this video. What is important is to help you locate this information. But if you need to know, the stress test tool I used consumed all available CPU, RAM, and also filled up the hard drives. That will certainly cause some errors in the event log. From here in production though, we could do further research on those errors. For example, we could go to AVD Insights in the host pool and dig further into the session host. Let's go back to connection performance. And then we'll go to the top 20 users by RTT. The user we're researching, user 4, looks good, but it shows that other users have a high RTT time. If we go to details, And from details, we'll scroll down. It shows the gateway region for this user is Australia. If this user was experiencing an issue, it would likely be caused by the high RTT. That is a walkthrough of AVD Insights, including steps we can take to diagnose user connection and performance issues. I hope that helps you to review AVD Insight data and track down problems if they come up. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.